Today we'll be making a taco salad. Some of my favorite items to put on the taco salad is you'll need some tomatoes. I like to dice them up. I usually get these uh, grape tomatoes and cut them in half. I'll be using a fresh green pepper. It's always important to use fresh vegetables. I also have a head of lettuce here. Some people like to buy the bagged salad, but no. I like to get fresh lettuce, peel off the first couple of layers. Kind of get rid of the brown stuff. I'll set that over here. Then I usually will take a cut and chunk off. Slicing up this lettuce. Let me cut it long ways like this. And then I go back, you can see it's cut this way, then I'll turn it. Because people usually like their lettuce cut into small pieces. So I'll cut turn it this way and then I'll cut cross grain like this. Turn it small pieces. And I like to keep everything in a separate bowl because everybody likes a little bit of different stuff on their taco salad so they can just come through and put whatever they would like on it as much as they would like. So now I'll have a bowl of lettuce here to go with the, by the way the counter is clean and bleached along with my hands. So now I have the tomato and lettuce. Now over here, if you want to step over here, I'll show you I used a uh, Belvita cheese and some salsa. And I had to put a little bit of Mexican blend in there too. Um, it's great with the chips. As you can see, I added a little bit of shredded cheese, which hasn't quite melted yet because you see the little strands in there. But this little crock pot, it works quite well. I'll have that cheese melted in no time. Of lean ground beef. So we'll just cook this until brown. And it's also important to drain it. You don't want to have too much grease. And with the meat, it makes it really oily. I don't like the taste of it. And I also have, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite uh, seasonings, Ortega. And uh, I usually buy the kind with less sodium. I have a 10-year-old uh, son, so I try to watch out and make sure that he eats properly. Two of, the, two of the chips that I like to use. This is the jalapeno with a hit of lime. Very good, very crisp, very delicious. We also have these little ones. These are bite-sized chips, so you don't have to break them up before you eat them. So just put them on your plate and just pick up with the, uh, there's no, no uh, fork or spoon necessary when you're eating a taco salad. These are already in the bite sizes. Also got a uh, green pepper, which I've already washed. It's important to wash your vegetables when you get them from the store, especially now with all these viruses and things going around. So I just use the whole thing. I don't like uh, storing green peppers after they've been cut. If you're gonna use a green pepper, just use the whole thing. You can always bag it later if you don't eat all of it. It's always good to have a, uh, a nice lunch the next day. I also like <clears throat> the salsa with the corn and black bean in it, very delicious. That's the kind I, I almost only buy that kind now because I like it very much. That's what you want to do is dice these into small pieces, just like we did the lettuce, maybe a little bit smaller than we did the lettuce. We'll put those in a bowl. I dice kind of quick, but then again, I've been doing this for a long time. So I, can, I know how to cut and still be safe with the knife. Just keep your fingers back and bent in. Last thing you want to do 
with some bloody green peppers. You want red pepper, if you want your green peppers to be red, you bleed on them. If you want red peppers, just buy red peppers. It's also important to make sure that the meat is cooked thoroughly. Okay, now we have our green peppers, lettuce, tomatoes. I don't want to use this fourth bowl for is to put the cheese in. Let's go ahead and put the cheese in there. I usually try to clean up as I go because I don't like a really mess when I'm done. So it's what I want to do is put a like to put a spoon in this one just to make it a little bit easier for everybody. That let's get rid of this. Let's check on our cheese now and see if it's melting. See if it's melting pretty good here. It's coming along nicely. These little crock pots come in pretty handy. It looks as if it needs a little bit more salsa. Let me add just a little salsa to that. So mix that in there like that and it all melts together. Just leave it just like that for a moment. I also like to, just a little bit, I'll put just one, two, three of the pepper. I don't add salt, I don't think salt's very good for you, and with the cheese and everything else, you don't really need the salt. The cheese already has enough salt in it, I'll give it enough flavor. But the pepper's a nice touch, especially when it comes to uh, having a little bit of Mexican food. Chop that up, and we're just gonna let that go. Yeah, medium heat. I usually go right down, straight down, medium. Depends. Um, you don't want to cook it too quick because it'll cook on the outside, brown and burn on the outside, but the inside of the uh, meat will still be raw. So you want to cook it thoroughly. So we're just gonna let that go for a minute here. When this is completely brown and drained. So what you want to do is, for one pound of meat, you only want to use about half of one of these seasonings because if you get it too strong, it doesn't taste well. So I usually use about half of one of these. And once it's drained, when we go to put this on, we'll add just a little bit of water. About three tablespoons of water is all it takes. It helps the uh, seasoning stick to the meat better if the meat's a little bit moist. So, we're going to go ahead and let that cook. This is uh, Frank's Red Hot. It's a good hot sauce for, for uh, Mexican food. It's not, not too hot to where you can't taste the food. It just has a nice flavor to it. It has a little bit of a vinegar taste, but it is good. It's a, it's a good hot sauce. Let me take this out.
Okay, it looks like our meat's ready to be strained now, so we'll go ahead and take it over here. Use this deep strainer here. Go ahead and strain that. And also, like, see all the grease that's in the pan here. So what I usually will do here is uh, just take a paper towel, wipe out some of that excess grease. The less grease, the better. So as you can see, I got some of the heavy grease out of there. I'll set this here. I'm going to just throw that away, but since we're doing this, we'll go ahead. And then I'll just go like this, kind of mix this around a little bit. bring this meat back up to temperature because it just cooled some of it's straining it so we'll leave this on here uh, for about a minute or two while it's doing that I'll go ahead and stir the chili a little bit here this is coming along pretty nicely I know. okay so we put the seasoning in there and now we're just gonna add a little bit of water and give it a stir and then everything will be done